factoring third degree polynomials or cubic expressions using long division. The main technique we'll be using to start factoring third degree polynomials or cubic expressions is long division. To remind us of how long division works, we'll have a brief review by taking a three digit number, 943, and dividing it by a two digit number, 23. We first figure out how many times two goes into nine, and that would be four. Next, we multiply the four by 23, and that makes 92, which goes below the 94. Subtract 92 from 94, which is two. Bring down the remaining three. Divide 23 by 23, which equals one. 1 multiplied by 23 is 23, then place it under the 23 below, then subtract 23 from 23, which is 0. So the quotient of 943 divided by 23 is 41. Factoring a third degree polynomial or cubic expression can be started in the same manner by long division. Third degree polynomials that can be factored, such as this one, x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6, are the products of three binomials. Factoring third degree polynomials is a more complex process than factoring trinomials, especially for someone without much experience at it. We get our major clues of where to start from the cubic term, which is x cubed, on the left, and the constant term, which is 6, on the right. This tells us that the first term of each of the binomials will probably be x, since x times x times x is x to the third power, or x cubed. What's more in question is the last term of each binomial. We don't know what the factors are, but we do know that these three final terms multiplied together equals six. So they could be one times three times two or a few other combinations with plus and or uh, minus signs. Since one could be one of the factors of six, we will start by dividing this third degree polynomial by the binomial x plus one so we place x plus 1 to the outside, starting the process of long division. We first look at x and what will happen to x cubed if we divide it by x. And we get x squared, which we put up on the top. We then take the x squared and multiply it by the x first to get x cubed. Then multiply the x squared by the 1 and place it here underneath the negative 4x squared. Now we subtract just like we would with numbers, x cubed minus x cubed equals zero and negative 4x squared minus x squared equals negative 5x squared. Bring down the x term, which is x. Now we divide negative 5x squared by x and get negative 5x. And we multiply negative 5x by x and place it down here as negative 5x squared. Next we take the negative 5 and multiply it by 1 and place the product negative 5x below the x. Then we subtract negative 5x squared minus negative 5x squared equals 0, and x minus negative 5x is positive 6x. This is where understanding of integer subtraction is important. It's very easy to make a mistake and calculate negative 4x, but it's really positive 6x. Next we bring down the 6. We then divide 6x by x and get 6. Now we multiply the 6 by x, which is 6x, and place it under the 6x. Then we take the 6 and multiply it by 1, which is 6, and place it here under the 6. Finally, we subtract 6x from 6x, and 6 from 6, and have nothing left. Which means that x plus 1 is one of the binomial factors of x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6, and that we still have to factor the remaining trinomial x squared minus 5x plus 6 to factor x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 6 completely. If x plus 1 hadn't worked out, we would have had to try another, maybe x minus 1 or something else to see if that would have worked. To further factor our original third degree polynomial, we just have to factor x squared minus 5x plus 6 in the two remaining binomials, if possible. For that, we can use our box method and place and put x squared in the upper left corner and 6 in the lower right corner. Now we can make a list of factors of 6, and next to the list of factors we can make a column summing those factors, and we see that the sum of negative 5 matches the coefficient of 5, which is also negative 5. So we place the negative 3 on the top and the negative 2 on the side of the box, so we know our remaining factors of quantity x minus 3 and quantity x minus 2. 
And if this expression were part of the equation where we needed to solve for zero, the, the solutions would be x equals negative 1 or x equals positive 2 or x equals positive 3. But here's our answer, factored completely, boxed in. Here's a trinomial wheel factor, x cubed minus 7x minus 6. Again, the most challenging thing is to figure out the first binomial that needs to be factored out. Owing to time limitations, I'll just show what I did. I took a chance and used x plus 1 as a binomial, and it did divide evenly to get x squared minus x minus 6. And the x squared minus x minus 6 factors out to quantity x minus 3 times quantity x plus 2. So our answer, factored completely, is quantity x plus 1 times quantity x plus 2 times quantity x minus 3. The arrows show the placement of the factors according to calculations. To be sure, we can check by graphing or some other means, and that is our final answer. Factoring third-degree polynomials is more complicated than factoring trinomials, but the same principles apply. I invite you to try and find some by yourself to get some practice. This has been Factoring Third Degree Polynomials Using Long Division. Thanks for viewing.